be it oranges, which has got the, the orange pulp has got so much of roughage in it, be it spinach, be it, uh, you know, pomegranate, be it watermelon, you name it, and it has got a lot of fiber and roughage in it. Right? Fruits as well as vegetables. So these are also grown, you know, these are also food that we get from the plants. Right? So these are also grown uh, for agricultural purposes. Okay. Now we come to crops and the type of crops. So crops are also of different types. Right? So when plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, you know, that's known as a crop. That's just the definition of it. Now, crops mainly are of two types, herbaceous and shrubs and trees. What are herbs? Smaller than our height, uh, natural height. Uh, shrubs mm -hmm. are the one that are up to our height or little bit higher and trees are the one that are much more higher and uh, stronger than. Ronald is very smart. Huh? You, you said the easiest difference in height. So this is like small, this is like medium. And this is like large or extra large. Isn't it? This is what you said. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, but what are the basic differences? What are the other differences of herbs, shrubs and trees? You've been studying this since class four. Um, trees have a defined stem. Mm -hmm. Which are like a big, thick stem or trunk. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. and large branches. But while if you see shrubs and herbs, they have a small they're broken off we call them twigs so they're much thinner their branches are much thinner and their uh, stems are thinner as well mm -hmm. and what about herbs herbs also don't have much of don't have a strong uh, trunk or a stem that they can hold on to it's just slow it's like thinner compared to so you know they do have stem you know, in this case, it's not twigs, right? Because twigs are something, you know, the branches could be called as twigs, right? Here, they do have a stem and the stem is a woody stem. I may right? add a point. Yeah, please do. Ma'am, herbs are generally aromatic and are used in medicinal uh, fields. Sh uh, Ma'am, they do not hold like uh, fruits and vegetables. Shrubs and tree, trees hold the fruits and the shrub, uh, shrubs can hold the vegetables in that or No, fruit. not really. Not really. Bo all three can be medicinal plants. Herbs, shrubs, trees, all can be medicinal plants. Mint is a herb, so it is a medicinal shrub. You know, there is hibiscus, which is a medicinal plant. Trees, of course, neem and eucalyptus are all medicinal. That's not one of the definitions. All right. Now, herbs. The moment they have fibrous roots, that means they are monocotyledons. They are monocotyledonous. Monocots. Shrubs will be dicots. And trees, of course, they will be dicots. Ma'am? Yes? Can you explain these terms? You don't know what are uh, monocots and dicots? Ma'am, forgot. Okay. Good that you ask asked you know what are cotyledons cotyledons you know if you must have seen chana you will see that it can be divided into two halves yes or no yes ma'am anything for that matter for example even if you're having a peanut you will see the peanut has got two portions yes right cashew nut you know if you take cashew nut you will also find cashew nut also has got two portions so these portions are called cotyledons Right. And if they have two cotyledons, then they are known as dicotyledonous. They, all of them are dicotyledons. Right. Yes. But, but, and it is also seen that plants which have dicotyledonous, they, they have fibrous root. Do you know what are fibrous roots? The yeah, roots are, exactly. they don't have a main root. The roots are something like this. They originate from one point. And then they just go all over as roots. This is yes. known as a fibrous root. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I just said the opposite. With dicotyledonous, uh, they always have tap roots. What happens with tap roots? 
<clears throat> let me just draw it here. This is dicots will always have tap roots, right? If this is a dicotyledonous plant, peanut, kaju, you know, dal, chana, whatever, the tap roots will always have a main root, and from that main root, the other roots will come out. And from there, the root hairs will come out. This is what is a called a tap root. Is it clear, Ronak? Yes, ma'am. Right? Now, what will happen in case of a monocot? Mono means one. In case of a monocot, it will only have one cotyledon. Like, have you seen rice? Rice cannot be divided into half. Rice is just one. Rice grain. Even for that matter, corns. If you have seen corns, you know the corn that you eat, boiled corns and all. That also has, just has one cotyledon. That doesn't have two cotyledons like chana dal, moong dal and all. These kind of monocotyledonous plants will have fibrous roots. Fibrous roots means they'll have one point and from that one point the roots will go like this. This is called fibrous roots. So is it clear to all of you? So herbs will always be so herbs will always be monocots shrubs and trees will be dicots then i'll have to pull out names naisha come on tell me examples of herbaceous plants um mint mint basil. okay mint okay uh, they still know What else? Any more examples? Remember, eucalyptus come in there. What is eucalyptus? Eucalyptus is a herb, shrub, or a tree. I think it's a herb. What eucalyptus? Ma'am, it's, it's a tree. tree. It's a tree, yeah, dear. It's, it's such a huge tree. It's a huge tree. we have coriander right then we have all the paddy wheat corn all of these fall under the herbaceous crops remember I just now told you that these are all monocots these have all fibrous roots so all these fall under herbaceous crops well, to all of you the shrubs that we have is of course potato tomato all the most of the vegetables, brinjal, lady's finger. Aplo koi, I mean none of you have fruits and vegetables, is it? Hmm? And name the trees which are grown for agricultural purpose. This should be easy. Yes, apple. Apple orchards, neem, eucalyptus, what else? Coconut, coconut orange, yes. Orange. orange orchards, yes. And the list can go on. Avocado, kiwi and what not. Right. So now have you got a fair understanding of what are herbs, what are shrubs and what are trees? Yes, Ronak, yes, of course, you can do it by the size. Herbs are small, shrubs are medium in size, trees are big, but many a times there would be a confusion between shrubs and herbs. You really can't go by the height always. You have to look at the feature. The first feature, excuse me, are the cotyledons. You'll have to check the cotyledons. If the cotyledons can be divided into half, that means it's a shrub. Mm-hmm. And does coriander have cotyledons? Of course, dhania. Dhania seeds, you can divide, you can break coriander seeds into two equal half and sprout it in water and then lay it on the soil. You will find, you know, coriander sprigs coming out. Try this at home. Yes. Okay. So, now we come to the herbaceous crops right 
Now herbaceous crops, they can be divided, further divided into three types. What are the names? Kirtana. What are the types of herbaceous crops? Mom, uh, Kharif crops, Zaid crops and Rabi crops. Very good. And on what basis are they classified? On the season they grow. On the season they grow. Very good. So basically, you know, depending on the season they grow, they have been divided into different kinds of crops. Now first, let's start with Kharif crops. Kirtana, can you please read out what are Kharif? Yes, ma'am. The seeds of these crops sown in June or July, the crops are harvested in September or October. October, yes. And the examples are? Sorghum, sugarcane, pearl millet, pulses, oil seeds. Correct. Oil seeds would be basically like cotton, sunflower, etc. Okay. So, you know, we really are not farmers. So, we will not be able to remember that way. But try to keep it in mind that Kharif, you know, is sown in June, July. That is during the monsoons. And they are harvested during the winter, end of monsoon and winter, beginning of winter, right? And please try and remember at least five examples, sorghum, sugarcane, pearl millet, pulses, oil seeds, right? So please try and remember this. Kharif, monsoon may start hota hai. End of monsoon, beginning of winters, may we are we are we harvest them. That is kharif crops. You know, actually, what happens? For example, a farmer has a piece of land, right? In this piece of land, actually, he can use this piece of land either once a year, twice a year, rarely, rarely thrice a year, but mainly it is done twice a year. Why to you know keep the land idle? Because a crop takes maximum four to six months time. Right. And then maybe one or two months, you know, they keep it khali just to, you know, prepare it for the next season or the next crop. Right. So after growing the kharif crop, maybe, you know, then they will, uh, you know, aerate. They will put in the required amount of fertilizer, manure, make it rich, irrigate, you know, and then make it ready for the next season. Maybe they'll put a zayat crop here. Because Ma these, yeah. But they can sow it many times now if, it, if they sow different crops for the nutrition of soil. Yeah, so but then again, you know, sorghum, sugarcane, you know, he can only put it again next year, June or July. So yeah. from October to May, his land will be empty, no? So during that time, he will put another kind of crop. Yes, ma'am. Right, so why will he keep his plot empty, land empty? He will put another kind of crop. So what will happen is that his land will also not be empty and he will also earn money. And there would be a kind of, you know, circulation of minerals and fertilizers in his land. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we move on to the next crop, which is known as the Rabi crop. What are Rabi crops? These are known as winter crops also. Right. Kavya, can you please read out what are Rabi crops? Uh, Rabi crops, these are also known as winter crops. The seeds of these crops sown in October are sown in October or November. The crops are harvested in March or April. Winter flowers and winter vegetables are grown. For example, Correct. wheat, barley, pea, oats, etc. Correct. So it's a, you know, it could be different things. It could be, it could be cereals, it could be pulses, it could be vegetables, it could be anything. But they are utilizing it. So as soon as the kharif is over, the rabi begins. Remember, they harvested a kharif in September, October. So if he harvests kharif in September, one or two months, he'll, he'll leave idle. And then October, November, he'll plant all these in his farm, in his land. And then next year, summers, he will harvest this. So almost six months. Have you observed one thing that during the winter crops, you know, they require very less water. Oats is kind of dry, barley is dry, wheat is dry, except for maybe, you know, peas. Peas consume a bit of water, but winters anyways, you know, the water requirement is also, uh, the, uh, the supply of water is also less. 
right? So nature is such that, you know, it grows also crops which can grow in less water. If you see oats, oats are completely dry. They require very less water, right? Ma so that, yeah. A kharif crop also uh, means require less water, no? Then. Kharif, not really, because see sugarcane. They have been, you know, they require a lot of water. That's the reason why they get the monsoons. Monsoon may they grow so ready-made, they get a lot of water. Of course, the farmer also has to do a bit of irrigation, right? But there's a lot of natural uh, monsoon rainwater also that they get. Okay. Ma'am, um, paddy is what? Paddy requires a lot of water. Paddy really requires, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think so paddy is a kharif crop. Okay. If I'm not wrong. Right? Now we come to Zayed crops. What are Zayed crops? Uh, Veda, can you please read it? May I read? Okay, Ronak, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Zayed crops. These are also known as summer crops. The seeds of these crops sown in, are sown in March or April. Summer flowers and summer vegetables are grown. The crops are harvested in May or June. For example, cucurbita, legionaria, bitter god, melons. Very good. So basically, you know, Zayed as a word itself says, you know, these are summer crops. All the fruits and vegetables that we get during the summers, you know, which have a lot of water content, the entire melon family. There are so many, there are at least eight to nine different kinds of melons musk melon watermelon you know different different kinds of melons so all of them are grown even uh, for that meter kira you know we call it uh, cucumber right cucumber also is like a cucurbita is a family cucumber is just one of them there are different kinds you know i think so zucchinis also fall into the cucurbita family there are many other different kinds of you know uh, vegetables which fall under the cucurbita family these also grow abundantly during the summers and we human beings also consume a lot of these during the summers because the water content is really very high and which is very good for our health right 